From Delaware's most award-winning radio news team, this is WDEL Video News. Here's Chris Carl. Among Delaware's top stories for Thursday, December 7th, a Delaware soldier is killed in Iraq. Two crashes involving school buses and a milestone for Habitat for Humanity. Here are the details. A soldier from Delaware has lost his life fighting the war in Iraq. The Defense Department says 26-year-old Army Sergeant Keith Fiscus of Townsend died Saturday in Baghdad of injuries sustained when a bomb detonated near his vehicle during combat operations. Fiscus was a 1998 graduate of Glasgow High School. He is the 14th Delawarean to die in the Iraqi war. A judge has ruled that a Delaware man who claims he was repeatedly molested by a Catholic priest as a child can proceed with a lawsuit against his alleged abuser and other church officials. Eric Eden claims he was molested hundreds of times by the Reverend James O'Neill. Superior Court Judge Calvin Scott has ruled the suit can move forward. He did, however, dismiss Bishop Michael Saltarelli as a defendant in the suit. What a Claymont woman saw as a punishment for her child now has her in hot water. 24-year-old Janisha Patel of the Naaman's Apartments is accused of putting her three-year-old girl in a scalding hot tub Monday night and forced her to stay there for a time. The little girl will need surgery to repair damaged skin on her feet. Patel has been charged with endangering the welfare of a child. A lawsuit against a state lawmaker has been dismissed. WDEL News continues in a moment. As you look for your college experience, make sure you look at Wilmington College, your key to success. A Superior Court judge has dismissed a citizen's complaint accusing a state lawmaker of illegal double dipping, saying only the Attorney General can bring such an action. The lawsuit was filed against Dover Representative Nancy Wagger for billing the Capitol School District, where she was a school-to-work coordinator, for time spent on legislative duties. Superior Court Judge Richard Cooch has ruled that Newark resident Bob Reeder has no standing to bring the suit. Some scary moments yesterday morning as two separate school buses were involved in traffic accidents. WDEL's Carl Konefsky reports. No students were on the bus heading south on I-95 when it was hit by a pickup driven by 75-year-old Thomas Hatzis. Hatz has swerved into the bus as he tried to avoid hitting a slow-moving car. His truck rolled several times and he was taken to Christiana Hospital, where he remains in critical condition. A second bus with students on board was rear-ended as it slowed to make a turn from Pleasant Valley Road onto Pencater Drive near Glasgow. 31-year-old Daniela Mazzola said she momentarily looked away from the road and then hit the bus. No students were hurt. Mazzola was treated for neck and back strain. I'm Carl Konefsky, 1150 AM, WDEM. A Maryland state trooper was hurt and five cruisers were damaged as troopers chased a New Jersey woman for 10 miles on I-95. The woman was wanted in Delaware for driving through an accident scene and failing to stop at a toll plaza. The ensuing chase exceeded speeds of 100 miles an hour at times. Police were finally able to force the SUV from the road in Maryland. One trooper who was hit twice was flown to shock trauma with injuries. He's in stable condition. The woman, who's not been identified, is expected to undergo a mental competency evaluation after she made several irrational statements to troopers. Amtrak's chairman says the report on the power outage that snarled trains for thousands of passengers in May will be released within two weeks. The power failure halted trains on the Northeast Corridor between Boston and Washington. Circuit breakers tripped at substations, leaving trains stuck on the tracks. Amtrak chairman David Lanny says power upgrades on the Northeast Corridor are critical but new equipment ordered for Amtrak's electric infrastructure won't be ready for at least five to seven years. If you're an artesian water company customer, your bill most likely is on the way up. Details from WDEL's Carl Konefsky. Following a hearing before the Public Service Commission, David Spaked, Artesian's vice president and CFO, said if the commission approves the company's request for a rate increase, customers will see higher bills by early next year. On a monthly basis, the first step is about $1.92 a month uh, over the current rates, which are temporary. We had put them into place back in July, so it'll be $1.90 a month. Um, the second step then would add a, another dollar to that, or it'd be $2.92 a month over about approximately 
over the current rates. In May, Artesian filed for an increase of almost $9.9 million, but challenges to that filing resulted in a settlement with Artesian now looking for a $6 million increase. I think the parties saw the benefit of just compromising on a lot of issues instead of going through because the expense of litigation is too high a price to pay when the issues we were so close on. So we decided to settle on the uh, on an appropriate uh, revenue requirement in this case, which was the $6 million. The challenges to the original request came from Christiana Care, General Motors, and the Public Advocate's Office. Reporting from Wilmington, I'm Carl Konefsky, 11.50 a.m., WDEL. Habitat for Humanity's Hope Landing Project is seven units closer to completion. WDEL's Lee St. John reports. The ribbon was cut Wednesday in front of a gathering of Habitat officials and homeowners, volunteers, sponsors, and invited guests. Dedication of the new homes at 7th and Bennett Streets in Wilmington also marks Habitat's construction of its 100th home in Newcastle County since the group was organized in 1986. City, county, and state officials were on hand to present Habitat with proclamations recognizing the 100-house milestone. Kevin Smith, Habitat's executive director, says the group plans to double that number in the next five years by building a total of 21 houses a year starting in 2007. Habitat for Humanity Newcastle County currently has five projects in various stages of construction and another half dozen on the drawing board. Reporting from Wilmington's east side, Lee St. John, 1150 AM, WDEL. It's something the Hens Hoops team hasn't done in 50 years. WDEL Sports and your Delaware AccuWeather forecast just ahead. You could spend your money at the gas pump, or you could spend it on those sexy pumps at your favorite store. Let Dart do the driving. I do all my shopping with Dart. It's the most convenient way to shop the outlets, and it saves me money. Now save even more. Get up to 40% off with a discounted Dart card online at dartfirststate.com or at your local Acme market. At this rate, with the money I save riding Dart, I have a new pair of shoes every week. Travel smart. Choose Dart. I'm Peter MacArthur. I'm Melanie Armstrong, and here are Delaware's top stories at the top of the hour. The most complete coverage of the news that matters in Delaware every weekday morning, 5.30 to 9 on 11.50 a.m. WDEL. In WDEL sports, the University of Delaware men's basketball team came close once again, but it still wasn't enough to avoid their seventh straight loss. The Hens are 0-7 for the first time in 50 years. After losing to Central Connecticut 63-60 to last night, Blue Devils guard Danny Powell hit three free throws in the final five seconds of the game for the win. Delaware led by four at the half but hit just eight of 17 free throws, dropping their seventh straight to start the season. The Chicago Bulls jumped to a 39-16 first quarter lead and were never threatened as they drilled the Sixers 121-94 last night. Ben Gordon scored 17 of his 31 points in the first quarter, and handing the Sixers their fifth straight loss and 12 in their last 14 games. Allen Iverson scoring 25 for Philadelphia. And the Phillies have pulled off the biggest trade of the winter meetings, landing an established starter. The Phillies get eight-year veteran right-hander Freddie Garcia from the Chicago White Sox for struggling right-hander Gavin Floyd and a player to be named later. Garcia was 17-9 and last year and has won 116 games in eight seasons in the bigs. Meantime, longtime Phil's catcher Mike Lieberthal has signed a one-year deal with the L.A. Dodgers. Your WDEL Delaware AccuWeather the forecast. Clouds and sun mixed through today, a high 53. Tonight, cloudy and much colder with a chance of flurries, low 24. And tomorrow, mostly sunny but colder, a high just 35. Get news updates throughout the day. Delaware's top stories at the top of the hour on 1150 AM, WDEL, or anytime right here at WDEL.com including news video from Delaware and around the world from WDEL and the Associated Press. I'm Chris Carl. Have a great Delaware day, and thanks for watching.